Thank you for tuning in to the Dope Vision Experience Podcast. Your boy Frank Nittany, I'm back for another episode, man. As you guys know, I like to do these mini-series within the podcast series. And, of course, I like to do the recap on Snowfall, man. If you guys haven't been watching Snowfall, you guys do definitely need to be tuning in because this is one of the top shows that's on TV. You know, it was created by John Singleton, and it has a nice black cast. And, man, it's been happening, and it's produced and shot in L.A., man. So if you haven't been watching this show, I would definitely highly suggest you kind of hop on, man. If you're late to the show, man, hop on. Get into it. Rock out with me, man, because I want to kind of recap this latest episode, man. Episode five, man. It was one of those, the one of the best episodes this season so far. And as we know, if you've been watching the Snowfall with me, man, you know how these shows kind of go up and down. They're not having, they don't necessarily have all the shoot them up, bang, bang, every episode. They kind of like try to build a plot and things like that. But this latest episode, man, this latest episode, man, it was, it was pretty fire. You know, although they had some, you know, some twists and turns in there towards the end, which I didn't quite understand because that's not normally their thing. But for the most part, the episode was pretty dope, man. You know, we had a, a nice, you know, episode where we saw Franklin. He get kind of caught up in something. You get Reed, you got, you got Reed caught up. You got the entire cast caught up in a hit. Man, they had three separate hits set up on Franklin. Teddy, when they was doing the drop, and then we had another simultaneous hit that was basically going on on, you know, on Louie, Jerome, the mom, the girlfriend, and then we had another hit that set up on Leon and his crew. Man, it's, it was a crazy episode, man, and I've definitely really enjoyed this. I really enjoyed how they kind of, you know, se separately shot it in three different locations, but at the same time made it feel like it was all happening at the same time, man. As we already know, we know Franklin and Teddy, they're not on the same page you know, because Telly has kind of like slithered his way back into, he slithered his way back into Franklin's life. He saw that Franklin was actually doing good. He was doing good without him. He found a way to kind of slither himself back into his life. And now he's kind of doing back, doing the drops himself. So they go out and they try to do this drop in the same location where they went, you know, the time before with a meetup with, with, with um, Oso. And so he went did the drop there, then in the middle of the day. And of course, this one day when Peaches is not there, Things go left, like crazy left. You know, this is the only day that Peaches has not been with Franklin. And that was the one of the point was one of the main points they try to point out in the beginning of the episode is like, hey, where's where's Peaches? He's like, man, Peaches called in sick. Which, you know, my mind said I've been already kind of been seeing Peaches been kind of sniffing. He was sick in, in one of the previous episodes. One of the first episodes, he was kind of sniffling in the car, talking to me I had a had a cold. So my conclusion has come to Peaches, I thought was first he was probably, you know, hitting the powder. You know, he was sampling the own supply. But now I think he probably have, you know, what back in that time, back in the 80s, maybe HIV positive or something like that. Because back then when you got the HIV, when you heard that you had HIV, you HIV positive, it was almost like a death sentence. And for them to kind of just kind of show Peaches in that light, I think he has HIV or he's contracted something that's kind of really putting him down. Because the day he takes off, all hell breaks loose. So Teddy, Oso, and Teddy, I mean, Teddy, Oso, and Franklin, they're at the new drop. You know, they're at the new drop. They're, they got the cash. Oso got the dope. They got the new guy with them that's with Franklin. And so they're chilling out, and all of a sudden you see a van pull up, and they're just firing out, letting the, ring, letting the bullets fly. Boom, 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 boom. Everything's going fast. Nobody knowing what to do. So Teddy, he's trying to get into the car, and he gets shot. He gets hit in the shoulder. So he, he gets in the car and he pulls out. He bails out on everybody. He got the dope in the trunk. He bails out on everybody. So all you got left with the guy who Franklin had driving him, he's dead. Franklin and o Oso, they're trying to get out the spot. So Oso's trying to get in the car. He gets hit. And so Franklin gets in the car, starts, to, starts up the caddy, backs up the caddy real fast, hit the van. Bam! Pull off. So they pull off and all of a sudden the, the car is smoking. Oso let them know, like, man, we got to get the car, man. It's not going to hold up. So they pull off, get off to the side, try to banish up Oso. They got the cash, $3 million in the trunk. So they already know, man. Oso like, look, man, look like we're in, we in gang territory. He's like, man, what we going to do? We're going we gonna to get the cash. We're going we gonna to move real quick. We're going to get to a pay phone. And back in those time, you ain't, got, you ain't got no cell phone. You ain't got nothing but the pager and the pay phone. You ain't got nothing else. So they're in an the unknown territory, unknown neighborhood. They trying to get somewhere where they can get the pay phone. So, of course, when they get to the pay phone, it's somewhere they're not, they, they're not clear where they're at. They get to the pay phone, and they're in somebody else's neighborhood. They're like they're in the SA's neighborhood. And so what they do is 
they already automatically rolled up on him. They already see him. They see him with the bag. They got the duffel bag, black guy, Hispanic guy. Like, they know they over in the neighborhood. They aren't supposed to be there. So the first thing they do, they check him. Pull out the blade. What you doing here? What's in the bag? Man, we ain't got nothing in the bag. So all of a sudden, you know, they have to take off running because they already know what's going to happen. They finna rob them. So what they do is they go and run, duck off, hit, hit the block, jump up, jump over a couple of fences, and then they duck off and hide up under the house. So they chilling up under the house. But before they did all that, man, when they found the payphone, Franklin got on the horn. He hit, he hit the family. First thing he hit Louis on the pager. Louis didn't, Louis didn't get up and move. Then he turned around, he hit Jerome on the pager. And they kind of sitting there with the family, sitting there with the wifey, and they with, with, uh, with Franklin's mom. So they're trying to figure out, you know, why are you still trying to get us to sign on to this project, which we don't want to be a part of? Because early in the episode, we already know Franklin's been trying to get his finance out. And so what Franklin's been doing, he's been kind of setting things up with his girlfriend. His girlfriend's been trying to get this big property downtown for them so they can be able to invest in, and that's going to be his long-term play. And he's been trying to drag Louis and Jerome along with him and try to get them to invest as well so he doesn't have to put all the money up. They don't want to be a part of it. So they're trying to get his, their mom trying to get their trying to get their to get their attention to try to say, hey, look, you might need to rethink this thing. And Lou is like, nah, I'm not having it, man. We got our own plans, we got our own vision. We don't want to be a part of it. And at that moment, when Jerome gets up to go make the phone call to hit hit Franklin back, he notices a car coming down the road creeping. He knows it's a hit. And so he what he does, he screams out to the family, get down, get down. And all of a sudden they ringing out the bullets at them. Him people in the him people at the restaurant because they sit inside, they sitting at a table outside of the restaurant talking. And they they coming by with the drive by shooting it. Bow, 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 bow. So all of a sudden they're shooting back at them. You know, drones shooting back, and then you see Lewis shooting back. You know, they don't hit anybody. Of course, Lou and Jerome doesn't hit anybody in the car, but the people who in the drive-by hitting multiple people in the restaurant, hitting everybody. So all of a sudden, you they're kind of they they all like discombobulated, they're confused. Everybody like, what's going on? What what's this happening to us? Somebody just taking a shot at them, and so they're running off trying to get in the cars. And of course, the police is already there. They're already there. And as they rush across the street, Franklin's girlfriend tells him, hey, man, give me the guns. Give me the guns. Because it looked like everybody else was flustered. But I already had my thoughts about her, man. I've been thinking already, like, you know, who is she? She, she is an op. Automatically, I feel like she's an op. She's always trying to, she's always got her ear to what's going on to Franklin's business. She's all, and then in the, in the previous episode, she was handling the guns so well that already made, made me think because she said she didn't like guns, but then all of a sudden she took the gun from Franklin and she handled it so well. I'm like, man, this girl got to be some type of alphabet boy, you know, setting Franklin up, trying to get all the, the deets on him because she already got him wrapped around his finger when she told him she was pregnant, which I don't think she is. We're going to magically, that baby's going to disappear. And she's just using Franklin to try to get, using that to get closer to him, to get more about his business because now she's all in there. And they're gonna definitely trust her after this. They're definitely gonna trust her. She took the guns. They try to they try to the, when the police had them on the curb, they try to get the guns away, trying to get it in her purse. They want she won't let them. And so all of a sudden now they feel more comfortable with her. They feel more at ease with her. They don't have any doubt that she's down with them. Which I have my I have my doubts about her. But back to Franklin. So Franklin and also they're up under the house, they're hiding, they're waiting. They're trying to wait it out because those guys who were chasing them, they're looking for them. But they ducked off, they ducked off up under this house and they're just chilling. And they're trying to be like, man, what just happened, man? We already got shot at. We got shot at by by who we don't know who yet, trying to figure it out. And then we also now we're running from this gang of people, man. They're just like trying to figure out like who is doing this to them. Because at the same time, he knew while he was on the phone, he heard the gunshots ringing out where uh, Jerome and Louis was. So he knows it's a multiple hit being being trying to take out on them. So man, Peaches take one day off and the whole thing go left. So I'm already, I'm like, man, what more could go wrong in this episode? And so we kind of flip over, we kind of see what Leon's doing, man. And Leon, you know, he's kind of he's kind of been trying to find himself lately, man. And and I know that he's having a tough time, you know, having to deal with, you know, the game. Killing people in the gang, killing his black people. He's trying to figure out ways to support his more to support his black people without having to continue to, you know, pollute his neighborhood with the drugs. And he's having a real, a real, a real uh, conflict with himself right now. And I noticed that. I'm like, man, 
man, Leon is really having a big conflict with himself because one, they got roughed up in the one of the previous episodes, they got roughed up in the projects by the police, and now he want he he goes to Harvey and like, man, we need the heavy artillery, we want we need everything, we need the heavy stuff, and so Harvey is Harvey's like, man, I'm sure I'm not sure if you want that, man. I was like, man, I'm not sure if you want to do that. He's like, man, I need what I need, man, get, just get it to me. So he the, he the gun runner. He's like, okay, I got you. Whatever you need, I got you. So you know, he comes back. He now he's at the house. He's at the uh, at the projects, and he's talking to the homies and trying to get them get their mind right and trying to talk some of the you know some of the the the, the righteous talk to him. And they're not trying to hear that, man. They just trying. They in the game trying to get money. And so he's like, man, come on, man. We got to think different ways. We got to think positive. We got to try to figure out ways to support our people, get our people out of the position that we're in. He's talking this righteous talk, and they're not trying to hear it. So what they do is it's time to go see It's time to go see Harvey because Harvey got the guns. So we got to go get these guns, man, because the police beating us upside the head. We need more artillery. So he goes over to Harvey, and they're like, man, look, I got I got what you need. I got what you Harvey, like, I got what you need. I got what you asked for, man. I got the bazookas. I got everything you asked for. And so now Leon's having a change of heart. He's like, man, I really don't want to, I don't need all this anymore, man, you know. And I was like, man, this this ain't this ain't Macy's. Like, this is what you asked for. I, this is what I got you. So this is what you're going to deal with. You, you basically don't pay me. And in that moment when they're going back and forth, he's like, man, listen, I only need handguns. I need some machine guns. I need things that I can kind of shoot real quickly and mostly handguns. And there's that moment they see car another car pull up. You know, somebody hanging out the side of the car with the bandana on, ringing out, letting go of them slugs again. Another hit taking place. Pop, 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 pop. Everybody shooting. Couple of Harvey guys get hit. Bam. So, you know, you know, you got you got Leon and his crew, they're ducking down behind cars. They trying to let go, of, they trying to let go of Willie. So as the car passing by, Leon ducks off from way behind the van. And he chased down the street, chasing the car, just letting it go. Letting it go. Letting, letting, them, letting them shots fire out. And he hits one of the guys who was hanging out the side of the car. He hit him dead on the ground. And so you can see in that moment, man, that Leon is like really in his head, like, man, I killed another brother, man. I killed another black man over in this dope game went unnecessarily, man. And he having that he's having that crisis in his head because he's like he really don't want to be doing it anymore, especially after seeing the little girl die in the in, in the previous season. You know, Scully girl, he killed Scully girl on accident on a hit that wasn't necessarily supposed to have been a hit. You know, so he accidentally killed the girl, and and since that moment, he's been having second thoughts. He even tried to get out of the game, and Franklin was like, "Nah, man, I went through too much. You gonna stay in the game because he is the one who's handling everything in the projects. He's the one who's controlling all the dope in the projects, making the money, flipping birds for flipping birds for Franklin, keeping the money rolling in the projects. So he was like, "Nah, I need you. I need you back in the projects." So what he does is. He, he, he continues to convince him to, like, nah, you're not going anywhere yet. You're going to continue to do what you do in the projects because I need you and I gave up a lot to keep you safe. So now he feels a, a some type of uh, a, a debt to Franklin, you know what I mean? He saved his life. But it's all twist and, twi- twist and twine back to Franklin decisions causing him to have to do something like that. Like, if it wasn't for Franklin, he wouldn't even be in that situation. A lot of these decisions has been Franklin on the job training causing these issues. And Leon has you know, got to the point where he's like, man, I don't want, he basically doesn't want to do it anymore, but he continues to do it because that's what he has. That's his way out. And so when he kills the guy, he kind of just like, he's, he's, you can just see it in his eyes. He's not, he doesn't want to do this anymore. He's done with it. And so now everybody's like in scramble mode because you've had three hits to try to take out the entire Saint family and the whole crew in one day. We don't know who's behind it. We're all speculating who's behind it. We're like wondering who could it possibly be. I said I had an idea. Could it possibly be some people, you know, Man Boy's crew that trying to get retaliation for what he did to Man Boy in the last season? Could it be? Could it be something else? Who else could it be? You know, could it be a new crew that's trying to, you know, rise up in the ranks and take over L.A.? You know, they're trying to take over the whole business. Like what are they doing? Like who could these who who could these people be? Could it be the people that you know that that Louis and Jerome took out Scully second in command? Could it be those guys that kind of get some retaliation on the Saint crew? We just we don't know. We gotta wait and see. So we flip back to Franklin, man. We know that he's stuck under the house with Oso, and they're kind of going through it. He's letting them know, like, hey, man, you know, Oso, man, I got a baby on the way. 
And, and Oso is so proud of him and so happy for him. He's like, man, it's going to change your life. And they're kind of going back and forth. And they're like, look, man, we got to get out of here. We got to figure out a way to get out of this neighborhood. We got to get to a phone. And so they come up with a bright idea. Like, look, we're going to go through the neighborhood. We're going to just, we're going we're gonna to find one of the homes that's empty. We're going to pop in and we're going to get in there. We're going to use the phone. He's like, all right, cool. We're going we're gonna to do that. That's what we're going to do. And so as they're leaving from up under the house, you can see the money. He's like, look, Frank's like, no, we're going to leave the money here. We don't want to run around with the money. And I thought in that moment, I was like, bro, bury the money. Why don't you bury the money? Because it was, you could see it was a lot of dirt in the house and they got a whole bag of money. It's three million in cash. You're like, hey, look, bury the money. And so I'm like, they didn't bury it. And you can see the camera paying into the money. So in my mind, I'm already knowing like that money ain't going to be there when they come back. You can already know that money ain't going to be there. And so they get out the house. And they go, they run, they go to the, they they going through the neighborhood and they're looking for different houses and they're trying to find a different house. And they pop in, they see, they see one of the houses, like, oh yeah, let's get this one right here. And so they get into the house, and as soon as they pop through the window, Franklin goes first and he goes through the door, and there was a bear. There was stuff right there. He's like, oh man, it scared the shit out. It scared the shit out of Franklin. Franklin, Franklin didn't know what to do. Scared the shit out of it. And Oso just kind of laughed at him. And you could see that this house was kind of filled with a lot of, you know, stuff with like stuffed animals. So he had a bear, he had an alligator. And he's like, man, what the hell is going on? Is this real? He's looking around, is this real? And so he's like, man, look, there's a phone. Look, Oso like, oh, there's a phone. Oh, he's like, oh shit. So he gets the phone, he picks it up, Franklin picks it up, and he's like, ah oh, man. The phone, it, it doesn't work. And in that moment, he turns around and he sees a guy and he hits him with a tranquilizer dart. And then he turns around, also turns around, he hits him with a tranquilizer, tranquilizer dart. And in this moment, I'm like, man, come on, come on, uh, Snowfall. What are we doing here, man? What, what are we doing? You got a guy with a, with, a, with a tranquilizer dart. Like, what are we doing here? This is in L.A. in the 80s. Like, what's going on? So he hits the ground. Franklin hit the ground and he's like breathing hard. And he's, you can see that he's starting to drift off. And the, and, the, and, the, and the old white man walks over to him, and he looks at him like, oh, man, are you going to stuff me? And he tells him, no, you too skinny to get stuffed. <laughs> Which was funny how he looked at him like, oh, you too skinny to get stuffed. And he looks over to Oso, he's like, Oso, run. He's going to stuff you, man. And that was, like the, that was like the funny part of Franklin just saying that, like, man, run. He's going to stuff you. While they both drift off because the tranquilizer dart hit them. And so, man, while this is happening, also, you know, we already talked about how Reed was there at the initial drop point getting hit in the shoulder. So when Reed kind of peeled out, on, peeled out on everybody, he was in the car driving off and he's bleeding. His shoulder's bleeding and he's like dozing off. So what he start, he does, he stops in the car because he got all the coke in the trunk. He gets out the trunk, he gets out the car, goes over to the trunk of the car. Opens it up, sticks a knife in it, sticks a knife in the coat, tears it open, gets a big, big line of coat, put it up his nose, <sniffs> sniffs it hard, get the adrenaline going, gets a, gets another big thing of coat, shove it on his shoulder, and just rubs it into the, the to the bullet wound. And you're like, man, I don't know if he gonna make it, bro, cause he dripping, he leaking, he leaking. Get back in the car and he drives to this house, and we're like, man, who is this? What house is he driving to? Where is he going? And so he drives into the house. He's in, and this woman, you see her, she's jogging back to the house. She sees the car in the yard, and she's wondering, like, whose car is this? Like, what's going on? Like, what could this possibly be? Who could this possibly be in my yard? And so she goes into the house, and you can see Reed, Teddy there on the floor. And he's just leaking all over the floor. He's bloody. And she's looking at him, and she's like, like, why are you here? You know what I mean? Obviously, they know one another, but they don't tell us, give us a story about who she is and where she come from and why Teddy decided to go to her house. And so she's continuing to try to like, hey, look, he's like, look, help me, help me. And she was like, you can't afford me. And he's like, I got 250000 And so in that moment, she's like, oh, shit. Like, I guess I might have to help him if he's good for it. And so she gets the gloves. She gets like the, the, the dish washing gloves back in the day, the big yellow gloves. She grabs them. And as she's talking, and this is why I say again, why I think why I think peaches might have HIV, because they're hinting at it again in this moment, because she grabs the grabs the gloves and she goes over to him and she looks and she was like, Hey, look, you you can't never be too safe with HIV. We know a man in the hospital who just became positive with HIV. And so that gives me an indication, like, okay, they've already mentioned this. So this kind of reconfirmed that to me that possibly, you know, my interpretation, I think that Peaches has HIV somehow. 
And so while she's trying to assess the situation, she's looking at him bleeding out and she's giving him like this snarky talk to him while he's like laying on the floor, like bleeding out, almost about to die. And so she's like, oh, look through his shoulder. She's like, oh, it, it went clean through. And she's like, oh, well, you know, she takes off his glove. He's like, I'm pretty sure whatever you're doing is probably illegal. He's like, man, it's not illegal. She's like, yeah, I'm pretty sure what you coming to me and you're doing and you in the way that you are right now is probably illegal. So she gets up, throw the gloves at him. And she's like, he's like, where are you going? He's like, I got to go to the hospital and steal some bandages to fix you up. And he's like, man, I'm bleeding to death. And so what she does, she grabs a whole thing of salt off the counter. It was like a, she had a box of salt. She grabs a whole handful of it, walks over to him, and just shoves it onto the wound. And he screams out so loud, so loud. And she took so much joy out of that. So obviously they got some kind of past together. They haven't they haven't told us because this is a fir- this is our first time seeing them, seeing her and him together. And so now he's like there. She's like the best. She's like the best medicine to keep you from dying to keep you from going to sleep is pain. And so when we see him, the next thing we see him on a table, and she's like got the operating stuff. Like she's literally a she's she's like she's and while she's like talking to him and trying to fix him up and get the bullets out, get the bullet out of him. She was like, man, in my country, I was a you know I was basically you know a a, a respected you know, like a physician or a doctor or a surgeon or something like that in her country. But she said, but here, I'm just good for changing bedpans. So obviously, she's a nurse here in America, but back in her in her native country, she was somebody of prominence as far as like a doctor or a surgeon or something like that. And so she's getting kind of like pleasure out of this and talking to him. She's like, oh, I missed this. I missed this opportunity to be able to see somebody so vulnerable like this. And she's talking to him and he's like in and out of consciousness. You can see he kind of because he's kind of he doesn't have any anesthesia. And so he's just basically doing it on just rawness right now. And she's got him opened up and she's like pulling the bullets out of it and talking to him at the same time. And so she can see that he's basically, you know, in and out of consciousness because the pain is so unbearable to him. So she can, she pulls the bullet out of him. She pulls all the little shells out of his shoulder, let him know he's basically going to be all right. And she was like, like I said, she was taking so much joy out of this. And I saw that when she threw put the salt on him, she was taking so much joy. And as in that moment, she's like wrapping it up and getting the bullet out of him. And she's talking about, you know, how much joy that she has from this and how much she loves, you know, seeing somebody so rawness like that. And she starts to masturbate right there in front of him as he dozes off. Into into Never Never Land, which is the most oddball thing I've ever seen in my life. Like the most oddball thing. I've never seen anything like this in my life. She starts to masturbate while he's laying on the table as he drifts off into Never Never Land from the shock that he has that he got from, you know, from her operating on him by taking a bullet out. And so he wakes up, he, 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 she wakes up and he wakes up in the next scene and we see him that he's, you know, he's okay. She got him bandaged up and she's going through his pockets and she's, he's like, what are you doing? He's like, I got to get, I got to move this car because you have a, you have a car that's suspicious with bullet wounds, you know, a bullet holes in them. They, somebody's in, in this neighborhood, they're going to know what's up. And so she gets the keys from him. Like I said, he's dripping off in consciousness, and, uh, unconscious again. And so. She goes out to the car. She knows something up. She knows that he's up to no good because there's no other reason for him to be there leaking like he was. And she's not have seen him in all that time. So something had to be going on. And she put two and two together. She's like, let me go out to the car. So she goes out to the car. She's like looking through the car, looking through the glove compartment, looking through the seats. And so she gets the keys and decides to go into the trunk where we already know there's coke in the trunk because we know that they, he's about to do the drop with Franklin. So he got $3 million worth of cash. So you, we got $3 million in cash that Franklin had was going to be traded for $3 million worth of dope that was in the trunk that he never got a chance to get. He, she opens up the trunk and she sees all the coke. And she was like, I hit the jackpot. So we know something's going to be up from now, from this point forward. She knows the dope is in the trunk. She knows Franklin's up to, she knows, you know what I'm saying? She knows Teddy up is up to no good. She knows he's doing something illegal. And I'm pretty sure she's going to want to end at this point now. So we now know that she, we now know that she knows about the coat. She bandaged him up, patched him up. And so we're now we're heading down to the home stretch of this show. And we're trying to see like what's going on. So Louie and Jerome and the family, they all safe. Because the police, the police came and she let them know, like, hey, look, I'm a CI. You know, don't take us in. I'm a CI. You need to call a such and such, call a detective. 
Call the detective down here. He'll come back and he'll let you know that I, what, what, what I got going on. I'm legit. So he comes down. And, of course, Jerome and the guy doesn't get along because Jerome already know that he wants to smash his wife. He already know that he wants to smash Louis because anytime he's in the club, he's high off the coke and he's want to smash. He, he, any opportunity he try to slide in, he want to smash Louis. But Louis been kind of keeping him at bay because she been kind of using him to get information. But at the same time, he like, look, I need some too. You know what I'm saying? I need some. I need some meat off the bone too. So he's trying to get him to like, look, I need some. I need you to give me up something. Uh, I, I've been trying to get the, you know, some dope off the street. I need to make some big bust. Like you need to give me something. I'm giving. I'm giving you all this protection. You give me something. But we already know that him and Jerome don't get along because anytime he comes to the club, Jerome kind of give him that side eye, and he kind of like gives Jerome the side eye at the same time. So he comes in, he bails him out while they're at the street, and as he had, and as they're ready to go. Jerome and him get head to head, and they finally having this, having this, having this confrontation. You know, Jerome want to put them paws on him so bad. He's like, man, you know, I, can I get a thank you for basically coming out here? Because somebody came in here, you know, shot at y'all, and y'all having a bad day. So obviously something's going on. He's like, man, look, I don't want to, I don't want to. He basically let him know, like, look, man, fuck you. Like, I don't care what you got going on. You, I know who you are. I know you dirty. I know how you do. But of course, Louis kind of calmed the situation down because if those two get into it, it's gonna blow up the whole thing in front of the whole cops, and they definitely gonna get locked up. And that's Jerome is like going, going, to let them know, like, man, I know you want to smash my wife. I know you, I know what you about. I know how you are. Let them know in his face. And Louis calms him down, and so they grin to leave. He's like, and, and so Jerome's like, motherfucker, always come to the club. We snow so much coke, doing so much shit, snow much coke than like a vacuum cleaner. And I was like, what, Jerome? Like, what are you talking? He's like, he's, he's snort, snort more coke than the vacuum cleaner, which he does. So he's always at the club high. And so he's always snorting coke. So he let him know, like, and so you can see Jerome and Jerome, how Jerome do it, man. He just, he got that attitude. He got that swag. And you already know how he get down. So if you watch the show, man, Jerome is definitely going to become possibly one of your favorite characters because you can see that he's, you know, he's himself. He's a man's man. He's an 80s man. He's le They definitely leveled up the gear that they're wearing, all the drip that they have on. He looks like he being nothing but Versace and goals. The previous episode, we seen him in the chachilla at the table. Like, my boy Jerome be straight clean all the time now. So now they're back at the club, and everybody's worried. Everybody shook up, like, where's Franklin? Franklin been paid. Franklin hasn't paged us yet, and we haven't went and picked him up. And, sh and, and Jerome let him know that there was a possible hit on him too. So he's letting him know, like, look, man, we gotta go find, we gotta go, we gotta go find Peaches. Man, Peaches, where, where Peaches at? Everybody's like, where Peaches at? He's like, man, Peaches wasn't there. So now they're thinking Peaches might have had something to do with it because the day Peaches take off, all hell break loose. Everybody get hit up. So they trying to find out where Peaches, but of course, Sissy's like, where's Franklin? We gotta find Franklin. We gotta get out there and find Franklin. And so they're all trying to rush out, and the girlfriend's trying to rush out to find Franklin. And so Jerome's like, no, you guys gotta stay here because if Franklin find out, man, y'all out in the street and something happened, it, he would never, he'll never forgive me. So he makes them settle down. He's like, man, Franklin's gonna figure it out himself. He's a survivor, he'll figure it out. He's probably already on his way back, which he's not, because as we flip over, we already know he got hit with the tranquilizer. So, you know, as he started, we, we flip back to see what Franklin's doing. Franklin's like laying on the ground. You got the pan in close tight to his tight to his face. And you can kind of hear him mumbling on his breath. Man, you he was my first love. I always loved you. You know, which I think, you know, he's talking about Mel, which was his first girlfriend. We already know he has a soft spot for Mel because she was younger than him. They was kind of feeling each other. Then the whole situation happened with her dad. She got what he, she got on. She got on the pipe. Situation happened with her dad. She knows he had something to do with his dad. She shot him three times. Damn near killed him. Had him limping. So of course that's his first girlfriend. He had a soft spot for him because you know at the end of the last 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 season he ended up the season by going C mail. So I think that's who he was talking about in that dream that he was having before he fully woke up. And so as he starts to come to, as he starts to wake up, he's one, he, he's waking up and he's kind of seeing where he, where he is and he locks eyes with a tiger. He's like, oh shit, oh so wake up, wake up. Man, it's a tiger, it's a tiger, it's a tiger in a cage. And the tiger is growling, like going crazy in the cage on him. And Oso, and they're both of them like trapped in a cage. And you see this white man come out and it's kind of just like got him in the cage. And they're like, what the fuck? They gave us a shock moment. And that's why I think the show itself took a little turn. I'm like, man, what what was the purpose of that 
to have that shock moment. It definitely was a shock moment. It was very unexpected to see them in a cage with a tiger next to them. So the guy had them in a, in a double cage. With the door, the thing is, the door on the cage can open up where the tiger can go to the other side. So I think one side is for feeding and the other side is for to keep the tiger, you know, caged in. And they're on the other side while the tiger can, they're separated by a couple of bars and the tiger's like going crazy on the other side of the cage and the man comes out and he, he lets them know, like, look, you in the cage, this was going down and the episode kind of wraps up with that. So, man, I think that is going to be a little bit, you know, different for them to kind of spin this. I think the writers are kind of like, kind of trying to play up the drama on this. Like, the show is already good. It's a well-written show. You don't need to kind of continue to try to wow us with a tri with a tiger. Like, yes, that was dope, but I don't think that's the essence of the show. The essence of the show was like, Franklin, the crew building, moving product, you know, continue to span, the, continue to span, uh, expand the crew, expand their, their, their footprint. You know, they had the Arkansas thing came up. We haven't heard anything else about the Arkansas thing. We don't know what's happening to Alton. Like, I think the writers are kind of getting too creative to try to keep us invested. They're dragging out, they're dragging out the Alton situation. Like, we think that Alton's dead because all the interpretation has been leading up to this to kind of show and show us that, that Alton is dead because Sissy is now, you know, in talks with some type of uh, government official probably from Cuba to try to take Alton down, I mean, take try to take uh, Teddy down for what he possibly did to Alton. You know, because we saw the previous and the earliest part of the episode, she was sitting down at the table and this guy is letting her know, like, hey, look, you know, in order for us to take it, take him down, we have to know what's going on. So we need you to put this pen in Franklin's office. We need to know everything. And so she's like, look, I'm not going to, you know, Alton did it his way and he missed. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to give up my entire family for to get what you want. I know you want something out of the deal, but I'm not going to give you my family. I'm not going to give you Franklin. And so this is where he backs off because he knows that he needs her to take down Teddy, which she wants to take down Teddy as well. But, man, you can't mess with Teddy because if you miss at Teddy, he going to take you out. And I think that sissies just need to just kind of take it easy and let what happened Teddy come to Teddy because Alton tried to take Teddy down. It didn't work, and he see what happened to him. He's possibly dead. He's disappeared. Nobody knows where he is. I don't think he's dead because I think they would have basically showed us that Alton got taken out pretty quickly. But I think that Trish trying to hold us on almost like a like a daytime soap opera, man, like General Hospital, All My Cheering or something like that. Like, especially in General Hospital, somebody will pretend to almost be dead, being they'll be in the uh the, the hospital bed for a couple of weeks or they're in a coma or something like that. You know what I mean? Like, like they they dragging us out. Like, go ahead and give it to us. We're a pretty real smart audience. Like, if you're a writer, you can figure out how to keep us keep us engaged. But don't just keep dragging this out and thing out, and not let us know if he's dead or alive. But that's just me. That was my opinion. So with this episode, man, I, I really enjoyed it. I think there was a little bit of a stretch with the tiger, but the episode itself was really good. I hope they're introducing somebody, some new foe that Franklin has to go against, you know, antagonist. So I think they're going to, I think that's possibly who this new career is who basically try to take Franklin, Jerome, Lewis, the entire, fam the entire family out in one walk. So I just think that this is going to be something that kind of helps push the story forward for Franklin to kind of give him some because everything was going peaches he everything was peaches and cream for him. He had the the investments going good. He was working with Grady. He was about to get a, a decrease on the price on the bricks with Grady. You know his his one one of his family members was was was, was with Grady, so he had him locked in. He was able to do do what he wanted to do. Then Reed kind of messed that whole thing up through the monkey wrench in it. So I think that this is going to be something that Franklin really has to do. He's got to first talk his way out of getting out that cage, but we're going to see how that go. So, man, I hope you guys really enjoyed this episode, man. I didn't have my guy with me, the Wallace from the town, this episode, but I'm definitely he's going to be back on. We're going to continue to chop this up, man. I hope you guys continue to listen. I hope you guys continue to rock with us. Like I said, if you haven't seen the show, please go you know, watch the show, watch from season one, you know, binge it out and then catch up and then start tapping in with these weekly episodes that I'm dropping, man, because I want you guys to be in tune. If you guys want to, you know, talk about this with me, jump on the pod with me, man, I'm definitely down for it. You can always hit the Discord that's going to be in the link of the bio. Man, as you get in here, we can talk about this different sh this, this, this show along with other shows I like to watch. Uh, I'm, I'm watching a lot of different other shows that, you know, I like the Bel Air show. So if you guys are watching that, let's tap in. Let's talk about that. 
I just like watching, you know, good content. I like to talk to people who are, you know, like these shows as well because this is something I enjoy. So, man, I want you to always remember it's collaboration over competition. Man, each and every day you need to be getting up and chasing your dreams because every day that you don't chase your dreams, you get up, you're going to be working with somebody else. You're going to be building the wealth and the things that they dreamed about when they were actually in the position that you are in now. So get up, chase your dreams, bet on yourself, be inspired to be great. This is your boy Frank Nitty from The Sip. Until the next episode, I'm out.